Welcome to Aintree. Welcome to the official unveiling of the weights for the 2021 Randox Grand National. Who knows in a few weeks time whether there'll be crowds in these famous stands, but we do know having missed out last year, we're set to launch the world's most famous steeplechase, a race that means so much to the city of Liverpool. A sporting event that unites and inspires and one that this part of the country is rightly proud. There is no other sporting occasion like it. It's a race that furnishes us with indelible memories, a race that makes heroes. And who can forget the little horse with the heart of a lion who passed this post to go from Aintree great to Aintree legend. And they're off in the Randox Health Grand National of 2019. Tiger Roll out jumps Magic of Light at the last, and it is Tiger Roll who now takes the advantage coming to the elbow. It's been 45 years, and now Davy Russell shakes up Tiger Roll. Tiger Roll is remarkable. He comes up towards the winning line under Davy Russell to win his second round of Telegram National. Tiger Roll joins the greats. It truly takes a legend to win round here three times. But Tiger Roll has that opportunity in 53 days time. He will carry the weight of the nation. What official weight he'll have, we'll find out in a few minutes time. But earlier today, I spoke to his trainer, Gordon Elliott, and I started by asking him how Tiger Roll is. Yeah, he's in good form, Ed. We're very happy with him. Um, we're hoping to run him Sunday in the buying hurdle. All being well, once the ground isn't too soft. So, Sunday would be great to see him. How, how's he been since the last time we saw him? Because a lot of people were worried, as you know. Yeah, he came home. He was lame after the race in Cheltenham the last day. Adam, we injected his stifles behind. And thankfully, he's back sound. He's moving very well. And we're very happy with him at the moment. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the cross-country race in Cheltenham. And then, hopefully, uh, obviously, the Randox, Ancient Grand National, all being well. You say hopefully. I mean... The owner's already helping me, Gordon. I'm trying to promote the race, particularly to youngsters. Hey, Tiger Roll's going for a hat-trick, and yet we don't know whether he's going to run. Can the trainer give us any reassurance? Listen, I'm training him for the race. Uh, I'd be keen to run him. Um, obviously, Michael owns the horse, and he pays the bill, so he makes the final decision. But, um, you know, I, I, it'd be disappointing for everyone if he doesn't turn up. But, uh, as you know, he makes the decisions. Next, I spoke to the man who's won the race three times, and I asked Trevor Hemmings what the Grand National means to him. Uh, well, it means all the ultimate in my life, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I did build a holiday village next to where Ginger McCain used to bring Red's Rum right down to the, uh, the, the beach at Ainsdale. And that was many years ago. And as a result of that, and working with Fred Pontin, I was with, I was having to work the weekend when Fred won the Grand National. And uh, that equally captured me because I had to get these new holiday village at Ainsdale finished. And he went off to win with his horse Specify. And that was something you never forget. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, if you look at the, the Blue Ribbon, which is the Gold Cup, which is 
probably the ultimate in the UK, and you look at the Grand National, which is worldwide. And and it it is the, the Wembley of all racing. And you know, and that's it. And, and that's we... why I cherish Liverpool and and that wonderful few days that you can have at Grand National Week. And before I ask you about your chance of winning it yet again, I gather there's memories all around you there, isn't there? Can I see Ruby over your, your right shoulder there and oh, yeah. your own friends out in the field behind you somewhere? Yeah, well, my my most precious moment was winning the Grand National in the old stadium, in the, what I call the previous winning enclosure to the one that there's there now. The, the history of everything that had happened before was still with that particular winning enclosure, which was now, I think, uh, used as some restaurant or some bar. But that area and that ultimate, that come bringing in the horse, that walking all the way down as you do, uh, that being led there by, by myself and then the Willie Mullins relationship and the Jackie Mullins relationship, all to do with it. Paddy Mullins, his dad, and Maureen, the mother, all family. Patrick, who we know now as a, um, a, a grown, mature jockey, was a kid, crying his eyes out, walking down with the horse. It's something you never forget. It, passion. Wow. Passion from every one of us. And, and you know, Minty was kissing everybody, as you normally <laughs> do. So, I mean, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Right yeah. there. Yeah. We, we, yeah. Which of your challenges this year do you think gives you your best hope of bringing more memories? I think Cloth Cap would be of the three, but it depends on the conditions. Each of the three, and I mean, we've got two that should be in because I think we're, we're number 13 and number 46 with the two. They will be in. It normally goes down to about 80. And we're fortunate of these are about 71. Things being normal as they would be, one would expect all three to be in. But cloth cap for generally what I call fair fair weather in the sense that it's a nice footprint. Heavy weather, Lake View lad, and any sort of weather, these are hubbies, you <laughs> see. So you you've got to you've got to look at it that way, you see. So um I think we've a nice chance. Yes. And I love the name Cloth Cat, presumably with what after what you're wearing. Well, it was a lady, a, a lady you would know well called Catherine, who looks after me as the lady that uh, looks after my businesses. The one that put me on this Zoom is the <laughs> one that nicknamed it Cloth Cat. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, it's, it's, it goes with you. Everybody knows me with their flat cap, and I've even had to change it. The one I had on earlier had a hole in it, you see. <laughs> and I called it my my religious hat because it was holy, but I, I was I was told to take it off and put this one on. <laughs> hey, Trevor, tell me, youngsters like you, how are you getting on? Have you been vaccinated yet? Are you? In yes, the, I was lucky enough to be system? vaccinated at the end of last month, and I'm due another one in a week in a week from now. So I'll have had my two AstraZenecas, which are ideal. I've had no problems at all, not one bit. Right. It's an easy right. thing right. to have, and it's what everybody should have. Nobody should miss out on the opportunity of, of staying alive longer, is it? It's the, the thing to do. Well, there may be more than 50 days to go until the Grand National, but as you can see, preparations already well underway. There they are building the biggest fence of the lot, the chair. And I have repositioned to here in my presentation position for the Grand National, one of my favourite spots in sport and in just a moment's time we'll reposition to my right here into the weighing room to unveil the weights themselves but before we do that there are two men who could have runners in the race as owners who are at the top of their profession the welsh rugby center jonathan davis and top golfer lee westwood so lee you're well known as a lover of all sports really where does the randox health grand national stand in your affections you know for for people in horse racing um you know, it's very high up, but I think for people that don't watch horse racing regularly, it's probably the most famous race of all. And, you know, like the one everybody will have watched at some point. And, uh, you know, I think if you mention horse racing to the general public, the, the, the most famous race they'll come up with is the Grand National. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit like the Ryder Cup in a way. Um, you know, the majors draw in all the, you know, the fanatical 
golf followers, but the Ryder Cup pulls in sports followers. And I think the Grand National is the same. I've never had a runner in the in the National. Um, I don't know whether Dave has. I don't think he has. Um, you know, just to get a horse there is an achievement. Um, an oldish horse like Bells Hill, an even greater achievement. And, you know, it is... If he comes, you know, if he races, you just want him to come back safe and sound. Um, but, you know, what what a buzz to see him jump in those fences it'll be if it happens. Do you know what you're doing on April the 10th? Do you know where in the world? You're in America at the moment. Do you know where you're going to be at the beginning of April? Obviously, uh, obviously um, I, I am in America now and hopefully I will be uh, teeing off in the third round of the Masters with the lead with a bit of luck. Of course. <laughs> is it that same <laughs> weekend? The Masters. <laughs> No it way. Is, yeah, I mean, it, it it seems to always clash. I mean, this golf really gets in the way of horse racing at some, some time. <laughs> the Players Players Championship the week of Cheltenham, and it's the, the weekend of the Masters when the National's on. So, uh, yeah, what can you do? It's the biggest horse race in the world, I think. And uh, um, just to have a runner here is incredible, but to have a winner would be uh, just staggering. Difficult to put into words. So, Jonathan, you're the part owner of a Midlands national winner, a Welsh national winner, a virtual Grand National winner. How much fun have you had with Potter's Corner? Uh, it's been an absolute dream. You know, I think we bought him in 2014 and it's been a, it's been a hell of a journey. Um, he's had some downs with a few injuries, but, you know, as, as a group of mates and everything, we've been so lucky with him. And, you know, Christian has just done an absolute superb job with him and, you know, he's almost like one of the boys, really. You know, we've had some <laughs> cracking days out with him. Um, so, yeah, it's um, it's exciting. And, you know, it's um, hopefully now leading up to the National League can be in good form and looking forward to seeing how he goes. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the, the Grand National in just a second. But what about his previous races? How often have you been to see him? Were you there when he won, for example, the Midlands National, the Welsh National? Uh, so the Midlands National, uh, I was actually... Um, engaged with um playing Ireland in a Grand Slam decider so oh, uh, no. yeah so literally um I think he was running like midway through the second half and um as we won the Grand Slam obviously uh chuffed with that and then the non-squad boys come on the field to celebrate and tell me the Potters won the the Midlands National so it was uh, a, a double bubble as they say uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was um, great. And then the Welsh Natural, um, I was actually injured. So I was able to go and um, I had a big brace on my knee. And then when he jumped the last, I, I had to pull myself back from jumping it with him. You know, um, you know, it was it was a great day, the Welsh National, to be there and see him run. And obviously, um, Welsh trainer, Welsh trainer horse and everything. And yeah, I know the, the days out we've had with him have been superb. And, um, you know, we couldn't have asked for a better horse. And we feel extremely lucky with the you know the wins we've had with him already and you know we can't ask any more of him but um you know if if potter turns out uh, on april 11th and you know lucky enough he wins it comes home safe um yeah god yeah you know, we, we feel like we cheated the system you know we, we had a little, we had a punt on a horse you know christian said he's found the horse and um you know we've um we've done extremely well with him so yeah, we're it's, um it's something probably that um, you know we look back with with extremely fond memories. I wonder who will be standing here on the afternoon of Saturday, the tenth of April, weighing in as the winner of the Grand National. We're going to head to the hallowed turf of the weighing room to unveil the weight of the race sponsored by Randox. Here are the trophies from their first three years, and their owner and managing director is Peter Fitzgerald, and they've had quite a year. It's been an extraordinarily difficult year for many people. We actually feel for many people have suffered financially and also health-wise. But what happened was on 25th of January, we realized there was a situation in the world with this virus. And it was a Saturday night and I rang my R&D managers and we started work on the Sunday morning. We worked 24 hours for seven days. And in two weeks, we developed the first COVID-19 test. And then we sort of got through Public Health England approval, and it took a few more weeks. We actually tested the fourth positive in the UK. So once we realised there's this massive problem in the world, um, then the government realised that we could do this sort of work 
and we went in for a contract and we were awarded a contract for testing and as all our labs were public and private and then we fundamentally we invested very very heavily if we hadn't felt for many years uh, different technologies costing about 360 million pounds could we had already developed tests for uh, COVID-19 related sort of viruses, uh, MARS, MERS and SARS, and this gave us an edge. So we invested over uh, the period by 86 million pounds, and we've developed uh, the highest throughput lab in certain in the United Kingdom and Ireland. We can do about 120,000 tests uh, per day. Uh, we actually have done about 10.2 million tests at this point in time. And in the national program, we've done about 26% of all tests. And we don't control the logistics of the situation, but we're actually a lab testing organization. And our technology is based around the gold standard of uh, real-time PCR. So it's been very busy. We've taken on 860 new staff. And uh, we've developed many other technologies because there are many supply chain problems in the, in the world at the time. You couldn't get uh, the, a lot of the key consumables, reagents, and a lot of equipment. So we actually developed a lot of our own reagents and uh, equipment, which uh, are not manufactured in the United Kingdom or Ireland. So we invest very, very, very widely and very, very fast. We believe people understand that we are a health company and I, I hope they understand the importance of diagnostics. I mean, this pandemic has obviously very negative issues, but there are some positive things from it is that people probably realise the importance of diagnostic testing because this is one of the reasons why we were involved in the National and the Jockey Club in general was to get the message out about the importance of doing testing. It's not an esoteric thing, it's a thing that can really save one's life and improve people's lives. So we felt the, um, the health wasn't so necessary in the situation and we hope through this pandemic that people will value testing more and this will lead to improvement in people's understanding of the immune system which is very key to the whole sort of tackling the virus and other bacteria and, virus and generally even cancers. So there are benefits in all this, strangely enough. The, the global understanding of the immune system and genetics has really accelerated, which is good news. We're very excited. It's such an iconic event and uh, it gets out to so many people throughout the world and gets the message in and we were keen for people to find out what Ron looks does and this is part of the, spreading the message for, about diagnostics and I, we do think the national is a great opportunity to do so and we're very very pleased to be involved for another was well, really not six years effectively but another five years to contract this. So it is time now to reveal the weights for the 2021 Randolph's Grand National in the company of Martin Greenwood alongside me here, the BHA Head of Steeplechasing. And on Zoom, fingers crossed, are two Walshes. Ruby and Katie are joining us. Great to see you both. We'll be with you very shortly to discuss the horses. But Martin, we're here in the weighing room surrounded by famous colours. You've got Red Marauder, Rough Quest, one for Arthur Earth Summit here, a certain Tiger Roll as well. We've got pastries that um, out to luck on Sunday, I believe. We will enjoy them later. Firstly, tell us how big a challenge have you had this year? Um, morning, Ed. Morning, everyone. Um, very similar to the previous years, I'd like to say. I'm, I don't want to sound too blasé when I say that. Um, try and approach it with the same sort of uh, level-headedness that I've tried to do all races that I, I look after. Obviously, I know it's extra pressure with the national. Um, but overall, I'm, I'm fairly satisfied. I hope all the horses that are given an opportunity to run, turn up, and uh, we have a fantastic race as usual. So let's start with 70 is the first horse, and we're gonna do them in chunks of 14, Martin. And when we look at these, what sort of number are we looking to be at to get in? Yeah, I think that's a question that's pertinent to a lot of trainers with, um, and connections with horses down the bottom of the weights. Um, so I mean, historically, and using a, an average over the last few years, you're looking around the early 70s, 71, 72, which is approximately 10 stone, 9, 13 at the minute. Um, this is not a given, obviously, depends which horses stay in the race, but um, I, I would say around that, that area. So when we look at the graphic, you'll see Captain Orr number 70. We'll speak to Christian Williams in a second. 
you think that would get in? Uh, I think it's going to be around that area. That's going to be the cusp area, 142. Um, but obviously, there's 10 horses on 142. Um, and you might not want to get to the top of that list if you can. Ruby, you can hopefully see the horses there. The one that jumps out to many of 10-1 will be the Welsh Grand National winner, Secret Reprieve. Would you agree? Oh, definitely, Ed. He's a very lightly raced horse. He's only had nine runs in his life, a couple over hurdles, six starts over fences. Was a really good winner of the Welsh National. Runs in the colours of Mr and Mrs William Rucker, who've had great success. Well, not success, but had uh, near misses in the National in the past with Kappa Blue and State of Play. So they're big supporters of the race, and they're probably due their turn, really. Yeah, they are. They've certainly had some near misses so far. Right, let's move on to the next batch of 14. This one will go from 56 to 43. And Katie, Cloth Cap is amongst this selection. Is he rightly at the top of the market, do you think? Oh, he definitely is. I thought he was very impressive in Newbury the last day. Trevor Hemmings, obviously, we heard him speak about him earlier, and he's synonymous with this race. I'd say Trevor's a bit of a lucky charm, to be honest with you. Um, you know, he was super the last day with 10-1, gets in a nice weight with 10-5 on his back, and, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see who will ride him, I'm sure. John, John Joe G, G, Jr. will be working hard to be able to get down to that sort of weight. And having gone around there successfully yourself, how big an achievement for Vier Leon Rouge, who's amongst this section, to have jumped 223 of these great fences without falling? Oh, he's absolutely brilliant. I mean, he always seems to shine in Aintree. I think he's ran in two nationals at this stage, and he was brilliant back in the Beecher. And I'm sure there's lads in the waiting room who'd actually pay to ride him. You know what I mean? He'd give you a lesson. Just fold over, put your finger in the next trap, and away with you. Enjoy it. He looks absolutely super. And it just shows he's a model of consistency as well as regards soundness for a national hunt horse. And he's going to bounce back here here again and hopefully give whoever rides him another great spin. But another nice weight in his back at 10-5. And Ruby, we go from Farkless here off 10-3 up to Potter's Corner, who's won a Welsh Grand National. Impressive in the virtual one as well. Who stands out for you? Our class definitely does, Ed. I mean, he's a triumph hurdle winner. He was placed in both the Leperstown Chase and the Paddy Power Handicap Chase this winter in Ireland. He's a class horse and maybe Cabaret Queen. I know mayors don't have a great record in the race, but a mayor's going to have to win it again soon. What do you make of some of those? The conditional will be suited going left-handed. You didn't bump up Potter's corner of his performance in the virtual? Um, it's funny, I nearly ran Christian and suggested a six-pound rise for the virtual Grand National, but I don't think he'd have appreciated that. So I've left him on 149, uh, which is slightly below the mark he was on last year. Interesting horse, agreed the condition was a horse with good form in big big field handicaps. Cloth cap, obviously uh, beat him in, in Newbury. A very impressive win and secret reprieve. I think Evan Williams had a great season. Um, he was well in when he won the national, but it uh, in Chepstow, the jump for fun. Very progressive, and I would imagine uh, every chance of getting in the race. Just explain, we'll come to horses that still need to qualify in a moment. What about horses with the opportunity to go up the handicap? Yeah, it's a good point that some connections may not be uh, aware of. Um, when we've got a big block of horses, shall we say, 142s, horses who are due to go up in the handicap in the future uh, will take preference over those still rated 142 and those who are dropping from 142. So if you're right on the cusp, any, any rating um, adjustment going upwards will be in your benefit. The next batch we look at, 42 down to 29. Again, when we look at these, Martin, the Irish are dominant, aren't they, in these entries? Yeah, they've got almost 45% of the entries. Um, uh, and obviously, on the day, they'll probably have roughly 50% of the runners. Um, they've done very well over the last few years. Uh, and they've got horses entered from top to bottom, basically, uh, including the Jam Man, who's probably <laughs> well known to a lot of people, uh, done very well. Um, uh, yeah, so they take it very seriously. Any second now, Katie, of 10-9 for someone called Ted Walsh, is the national the plan? I think it's been the plan. It was obviously the plan last year as well. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to go. Obviously, with COVID, obviously, hasn't been straightforward. But um, he's come back this season and uh, he's had two runs all over hurdles and he ran in the Tiestes down in Gorn Park the last day. Um, uh, he pulled up that day but he's entered the weekend in the Red Mills and he's entered the following weekend as well in a two mile chase that he won um, last year so uh, we'll, we'll see that's the plan uh, it's a nice weight in his back and it's nice to be in, involved again and it's great excitement for, for the yard here as well you know it's, it's a small team so it's 
keeps everyone going. And did you watch earlier in the show? It must have brought back a few memories with Headhunter, Ruby. Was that you and Jennifer giving him a kiss? I was giving Ooh, Papi on it, sir. <laughs> Papi, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, definitely. Even the music, you know, the VT coming in, and I think you get um, shivers up up your spine. There's just something about entry, you know. It's 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 really special, and um, it's nothing but great memories for me as well. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for it to be very different this year, obviously. But hopefully, all fingers crossed, it's all systems go. And Ruby, what chance do you think your dad might have? I think he's a good chance, Ed. He's obviously a Kim Muir winner, but just on a point Martin was making about how serious the Irish take the English Grand National, I mean, the Randox Grand National is the only million pound jump race in the world. And that's why it's taken so seriously. Not alone is it the Grand National and all the prestige, but it's a really valuable race. And there's a lot of horses in here that look like they've been targeted at it. Milan Nathan, who won last year's Kim Muir chase and had a good run behind Manila Indo and Wexford early in the season, will be of interest for Gordon Elliott with 10 stone six. Paul Nolan's Discorama was third in Cheltenham last year behind the conditioner. He's in there off a rating of 148. He'd be another one with a good chance. But like, it's, it's just so much goes with the Randox Grand National and the prize money is massive. And that's why a lot of people on this side of the IRC take it as seriously as they do. Any interesting ones there? Any particularly progressive horses in that batch? Um, probably not too much in that uh, in that batch obviously but um, some of the horses already mentioned are going to be very interesting um, and I think we'll probably find even more interesting horses as we go up the, go up the list. Okay let's move on to the next batch of 14 we are getting close to the top weights this one will take us from 28 to 15 as we look at these Martin just explain the qualifying situation for some horses. Yeah this again this is a very important thing that um, some connections are, are, are unaware of. Um, you've got to fulfill two qualifications in the Grand National. One is you've got to run in a steeplechase in the current season, uh, which for instance, Burroughs Saint hasn't, uh, Annabelle Fly hasn't, Talk is Cheap hasn't, and you've also got to fulfill a distance criteria of finishing the first four, 23.5 furlongs or above in, in your career. So that's up until March the 22nd, so if, if you don't fulfill that requirement, you will be withdrawn. Ruby, we heard from Lee Westwood earlier, the great story if your old friend really, Bells Hill, could get to entry, could he roll back the years? I well, could, Ed. I think Martin has given him a chance. I mean, dropping him from a rating of 168 when he won that Irish Gold Cup back down to a mark of 153 today. He's only had the one run for his new connections. That was in Haydock behind uh, Bristol de in the Betfair chase. But he's a high-class horse who could take to the place. He's a good jumper and he's a lot, a lot of ability. And look, obviously, Borough Saint is one of those horses that hasn't met the qualification criteria yet but he would be intended to run next weekend in the Bobby Joe Chase at Ferry House which means he qualifies and obviously he's a previous Irish Grand National winner now I thought when they got off him in Ferry House in 2019 after winning the Irish National that he had English National written all over him and I think the Randox Grand National is his race Where do you stand on Bells Hill Katie? Yeah it's interesting points we always have to make and I think he's going to have to to fire back I think he's going to have to pull it out of the bag I mean obviously he has a nice weight on his back and he's been dropped down in, in the handicap as well but he's going to have to pull his socks up I think to uh, be involved in a Grand Docks good Grand National And what about Magic of Light Katie? Second a couple of years oh, yeah. ago a little bit higher this time around in the handicap Yeah a little bit higher this time around but she's a Magic Mare and you know they've done a great job with this Mare because she's um, I don't know she has um trouble with, with, with she used to have she, she actually has only has one hip on one side and they've done a great job with her to get her to move and to jump the weight that she does and Jessie has basically had more she goes over and back from England to Ireland all the time and she ran a cracker behind in, in a hurdle race last day behind um, Skelton's mare Raspiana but she's a very good mare over fences as well she went and she won around Newbury as well so she was uncontested that day and this has been the plan and she was a bit of a shock when she rocked up, um, written by pa Paddy Kennedy that day back in 2019. And, um, you know, but she, she kept going. She was in the, she was ridden handy every step of the way and she jumped and she traveled. And if they can get her back in that frame of mind, which she is gone down the same campaign, she has been go gone down and um, it'd be all the systems go and she might have a bit more weight uh, uh, on her back. But when she's in the right frame of mind, she's a very good mare. You can see Kimberlite Candy in that section as well. We'll look at the betting later with Betway, one of the favourites as things stand. Here we go. Let's reveal the top 14 
and the top weight and what Tiger Roll has got in the Randox Grand National. The French horse is off 10.13. One for Trevor Hemmings, off 11 stone is Lakeview Lad, and definitely red, Bally Optic, Yala Renke for Paul Nichols, Battle Over Doyen, 11.5, Chris's Dream, 11.7, The Storyteller, 11.8, Tiger Roll is off 166, 11 stone 9. Presenting Percy off the same mark. Delta Work won't run. He is injured. York Hill, who you saw earlier on, is retired. Santini, Easy's Land, and Bristol de May. Joint top weights at 11.10. But Martin, let's start with the Tiger. Have the O'Leary's got inside your head? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of deja vu um, from last year. Um, but the honest answer is no. Mr. and Mr. O'Leary are perfectly entitled to any opinion that they want to offer uh, and I'm perfectly entitled to not to listen to it, you know. I can't let distractions stop me from doing my job. Uh, I just view each horse and each race the same, um, but obviously if they want to say these things then that's perfectly, you know, to them. Talk us through your thinking of 166. Yeah, um, I did spend a bit of time on Tiger Roll. Obviously, last year he was due to run off 170 when he was 5 to 1 favourite or around those odds, which is a very short price in the context of the race. Um, obviously, this year is 166, which is a £4 lower mark. He's had four runs in between those two uh, one of the hurdles, one on the flat, two cross country chasers, of which he never went to yard at Cheltenham in November. Um, I think Gordon said earlier he was, he was slightly lame afterwards. He's second to Easy's Land, who we'll probably talk about in a minute. Um, it was quite a way behind, but the, uh, the connections deemed the ground was too soft. Um, so it, it's about knowing exactly how much ability this horse has got. Uh, it's really tricky to be sure. Um, you know, I'm not in the business of gifting races to any horse, never mind in the Grand National. Um, it's the same mark that many clouds ran off the year after he'd won it, 166. Just off top weight, it's a very, very compressed top eight horse, as you can see, there's not much between them. I hope they take this opportunity to run because, you know... Uh, <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> um, to make history, you know? Absolutely, um, we all want him to run. So, uh, but I can't, you know, I've got to give a mark that I think he's capable of running off. Ruby, what do you make of Tiger Roll's mark first up? Well, I think it's very fair. I mean, when he won his first Grand National, was off a mark of 150 when he carried 10 stone 13. He repeated that off 159 when he carried 11 stone 5. But he's going to try and go back this time off 166 with 11 stone 9. I think to be fair to the race, um, Martin couldn't do any different and I think he's been perfectly fair to, to Tiger Road in my opinion um, it is a handicap everybody is supposed to try and finish together and I think looking at the form he, he's been fair enough to Tiger Road Katie what do you make of the top 14 there? I think Martin's not going to lose any sleep over um, Tiger Road and his weight anyway that's all I know but um, yeah you know it's uh, a top Honestly, I don't think the winner is going to come out of the top 14, and maybe I'm wrong. Um, I think it's going to be at the lower end. It's all, listen, it's 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 a fairly condensed handicap within a way, and that's the way it, it has to be. I mean, ideally, I'm sure Mark would love to see 10 horses jump the last all upside. We all would. Um, I think they're all going to have the work up against against it, looking at the top end compared to the middle and the, the, the bottom end horses. I think there's a lot of good horses with um, nice weights on their back and I'd, I'd like to be the lower end of 11 stone to be honest. Okay, I'm going to come back to you for a short list of two, Katie, in a second. Martin, just the French horses on that graphic, Easy's Land and Ajaz at the bottom. How big a challenge did David Cotin's pair pose for you? Yeah, Ajaz is a horse that we don't know much about in the UK. He's raced exclusively in France. Uh, he actually finished third of the hurdles the other day to a horse trained by Sophie Leachu. Some people will have heard of, obviously, a UK trainer. Um, he's a cross-country sort of horse that they do a lot of in France, and I know that trainer particularly likes that um, that sort of uh, event. Um, he's rated on his French rating of 71 kilos, which is 156. Easy's Land, we know a lot more about. Cross-country champion, absolutely walloped up last year. Um, 167 he was given after that. Ran off that market at Cheltenham in November when he was odds on. Just didn't jump very well, unfortunately, that day. Um, I think it's just a horse that I'd, I'd prefer to leave on its rating of 167 until we know more about him. Um, maybe just his jumping would be a cause for concern over these big fences. Ruby, how much would you like to see Santini and Bristol de May over the big fences? Well, Bristol de May, I mean, it's not that long ago that Neptune Collange won the Randox Grand National. So, yeah, Bristol de May could be, he's a class horse, there's no doubt about that. And Santini was runner up in last year's Gold Cup. So, they do bring a lot of class to the race. Easy's lands jumping. It kind of reminds me a bit of Tiger Roll. He's low and accurate, 
he's never going to over jump but I can see why Martin has him where he has him um, but I would be tending to agree with Katie I think there's a lot of horses back down towards 11 stone and below that could be really unexposed but look horses have top weight for a reason and that's why Bristol De Mai and Santini have it OK then Ruby you go first your short list of two who would you like to ride in the 2021 Randox Grand National Borough Saint or Clock Cap would be the two for me Um I think they're both good jumpers, strong travellers, and they both have a nice weight in their back. Katie, what about for you? I'm going to go well. Number 70, Martin, Captain Ord for Christian Williams. He'll um, hopefully be in, will he? We reckon so. Number 70 should be okay. Mm-hmm. Walsh's, yeah. thank you so much. Zoom has worked. Thank goodness. We will see you both soon. Bye, thank you. And Martin, thank you very much. Indeed, it is all now official. <laughs> pleasure, absolute pleasure. <laughs> so let's check the betting as things stand for the big race. This time last year, you remember, it was five and six to one the field. What a contrast 12 months later. 16 to one Tiger Roll, 16 to one Kimberlite Candy and Cloth Cap with Betway for the big one. It is 20 to one bar with Burrow Saint heading to the Bobby Joe to qualify. Time now to get some reaction from the trainer, starting with Gordon Elliott. Gordon, one six six for Tiger Roll. Happy? Yeah, this I, I I sort of expected that really. You know, from the bottom of my heart, it's hard to see him having having much less being such a specialist. But um, listen, we have what we have now, so we've got to take it, and hopefully uh, he can he can do us proud. Hopefully, the owner happy as well. Yeah, hopefully, listen, Mike will have to make his decision, but um, we'll see what happens. And Gordon, what about others for you? How many do you expect to run in the race? Uh, I'd say I'd probably run, um, hopefully presenting Percy. He, uh, he's had a little setback and hopefully I'll have him back for the national uh, Tiger role, the storyteller, Alpha the Zobo. Um, you know, I thought one down the bottom there with 10 stone six could be very well handicapped as a horse called Milan Native. He's had a wind operation since, since his last run, so he's one I'm looking forward to for the English national issue. John Joe, 10-5 for Cloth Cap, you happy? Yeah, very happy, Ed, yeah. Um, the the important thing for Claude Cap is, is the ground, really. He needs good ground. So um, I hope they run out of water there at Ed. <laughs> Was this the first, as soon as he passed the post almost at Newbury, were you thinking entry and Grand National? Yeah, I, we were planning this last year, really, but it didn't happen. Um, unfortunately, he just didn't perform the way we, we would hope he would. But um, this year he came back in great form and he's a stronger horse really all over. And um, his run at Cheltenham was very nice. We're very happy with that. And then to go on and we didn't think we'd get in the Hennessy really. We thought we'd keep getting ballots out, but he just crept in at the bottom. So look has it and we're here, you know, and, and uh, he jumps and he stays well. So um, it's the obvious race to go for and 10-5 is a real nice weight. Trevor loves the national. <laughs> Just a <Don't> bit. <laughs> well, well, John, I've got the right colours. I've got Don't Push It's colours here. You can see so I've got <laughs> Trevor's colours here. And, and he was on flying form when I spoke to him earlier today. He just loves the national, doesn't he? Uh, loves it. Absolutely loves it, really. So we're hoping to get a prep race into him. And uh, that'll be... We've, we're in at Kempton. Um, and we're also in at um, Doncaster on the 6th. So I'd say... That's probably where we're going, Doncaster. Giorgio, many thanks. Pleasure. So, Paul, you could have arguably the best stories in the race. Brani wins a Grand National. And what about Sir Alex? He wouldn't mind winning a big race at Liverpool, would he? He always likes a winner, doesn't he? Um, uh, give me a copper. Uh, was obviously a bit disappointing when he ran in Doncaster the other day. Not the easiest horse in the train. The biggest challenge I've got is getting him there, to be honest with you. That'd be like a winner if he gets out. So, he's, you know, we've got all to do to get him, get him there fit and healthy on the day, to be honest with you. The chanting fly won't get in the race. The, the horse, you know, I'd love to run is Yala Enki, and I've got to be sort of um, uh, sweet uh, talking Clive and Joan really into letting him run. Um, to be fair to him, he did fall at the first in the um, feature, but that that might not all be lost on him because he woke up fairly quickly and he actually jumped round loose afterwards very, very well. And since that day, his jumping has been much better. Uh, with Sandown the other day, he was brilliant. So, I mean, he's basically experienced horse. He's been around everywhere. So, you know, he, to me, he's the ideal horse for the national rights. He's got a nice weight. Um, so, yeah, it's just a matter of uh, persuading Cloven Jones and let me run him. Christian Potter's corner, a bit disappointing again on Sunday. How is he? 
Yeah, he seems okay at all. We thought he was well going into the race. Um, it was obviously only a hurdle race, so perhaps we've seen at his best. He needs needs to have fences in front of him. So we'll just run a few tests now the next day or two and um, hopefully stick to the plan then of going to Cheltenham for the cross-country race as his prep for injury. And then you've got Captain Orr, who's number 70. Bit of an anxious wait with him as well. Yeah, yeah, he's a horse to be looking forward to running. He could be could be unexposed to the trip, and um, we think his style of jumping will suit suit entry. So we'd be quite excited about Captain Ord as well. Um, looks like he's got a real chance of getting in the race, and and he's obviously got a great weight. So so he could be exciting. Jesse, magic of life. What five pounds higher than when she was second two years ago? What do you make of that? I so suppose it's fair enough. Um, she was, but you know, she's she's off a fair fair mark. She's probably, I think, she's lower than she was going to be last year. Um, she's two pounds better off with Tiger Roll. Um, you know, look, it's fair enough for her. Um, and I, I think, you know, what in, in the great scheme of things, it's a fair. You know, she's still under under eleven stone, and I think that's a great advantage. And is it all roads leading to entry for her? All roads lead to entry. Um, I'm not quite sure where she's going to go next. I just don't want to run her on any heavy ground. And as we seem to have permanent heavy ground at the moment, um, I, I'm not sure where I'm going to run her. She may, she may come to Cheltenham to run in Cheltenham. Now, I said earlier just how much this race means to the local area, how big sport is on Merseyside. And a couple of days ago, I spoke to the Everton manager, Carlo Ancelotti. So, Carlo, first up, congratulations on the season you are having. How much are you enjoying that part of the world and, and the passion for sport on Merseyside? No, I think I, I, I have a good uh, relationship with this part of, of the country. Merseyside is a really nice place where to live. And, and for us in horse racing, April is the biggest day it gets, Carlo. It, it is the day when racing is watched around the world. And, and you like, you. not many people will know it, but you, you like your horse racing, don't you? Yeah, I like a lot uh, the horse racing because <laughs> I, I am not an expert, but I'm just a supporter. I have, uh, I have two horses in France, uh, um, Black Mirror and Honor and Pleasure. And so I'm uh, really passionate about the horse racing, about the the. The, the, the race of my horses. And, and honour and pleasure is very good. Beautifully bred too. Yeah, he, start, he started really well. Uh, he won the last race. I hope that he's going to win again. <laughs> and does it, give you, does it give you a buzz being a winning owner, same buzz as, as winning a game as, a, as Everton manager? Ah, uh, it's, it's really difficult. Really difficult to say, but uh, I have to say it is a, an emotion. It was an emotion to to watch uh, my horse uh, win uh, a race. Carlo, we need to get you involved in racing in in this country. Maybe own own a flat horse or a jumper in England, perhaps one day. Uh, why not? Why not? <laughs> Excellent. Now let me ask you about the Grand National. A quiz question for you, Carlo, to test your not your racing exactly. knowledge. <laughs> do you, do you know? We know about Calvin Lewin as a, as a hat-trick scorer. Do you know the horse that's going for a hat-trick of Randox Health Grand National wins this year? Yeah, I know. Tiger Roll. Spot on. <laughs> and it would be amazing. And, and we can't wait for everyone to return to Aintree. And one day, Carlo, will you, will you come and watch the Grand National if you haven't got a game on? For sure. Thank you to invite me. Carlo, thank you so much. And, and good luck for the rest of the season. It was a pleasure. Bye. Thank goodness Carlo Ancelotti knew Tiger Roll. Now, the one sadness this year is that Aintree chairman Rose Patterson won't be with us. Rose passed away in June. She did so much for the great race. Rose was a beautiful person inside and out, kind, caring, passionate about Aintree, the local community and the Grand National. Her role was, was amazing and all-encompassing. And I think it was remarkable to those who could see it. Many people couldn't see the totality of it. She was excellent with the staff, and that didn't mean whether it was full-time people 
part-time, for those people who just came for the big occasions, the big days, but also the owners, the trainers, all the stable staff. She had a wonderful manner and was loved by everybody. But she went, her, her enthusiasm and interest went much wider than that. Uh, horse welfare was very important to her and she was a key part of the team that is looking at maintaining welfare for horses and improving them all the time. So that was important. But she also worked uh, tirelessly with um, our charitable partners, whether that was Park Palace Ponies, where, as you know, she kept the horses um, during um, COVID, the first lockdown, but also Alderhay Children's Hospital, uh, Everton in the community, local schools. That was all part of her work, and she worked tirelessly. And then I think the other thing that we all saw was the love that she had for Owen and her children. That was very, very important to her, and she had great pride in their achievements. And so that, I think, makes us makes the whole situation so much sadder and, and so, so un, we just can't understand it. Um, but what I'd finally like to say is that from the perspective of everybody on the committee, we shall miss Rose and racing at Aintree will never be the same without her. Fundamentally to us, Rose is central to everything. I mean, she was our key component, that's our contact point. We believe she is an extraordinary person. She believed in doing good always, and uh, she always wanted to help people. And her love of horses, was, we feel, was very much reflected in entry safety and welfare philosophy, which is superb. To us, Rose is central to the whole ethos of entry. And again, Rose is really tuned into the people of Liverpool, and she's poor every aspect and would not allow any criticism of the entry or the people of Liverpool. We will sadly miss her, as in the Rondox family and my own family. She was such a lovely person. It's hard to realise that she's no longer part of Aintree in today's world, but she'll always be part of Aintree, as far as I'm concerned, and many other people will think the same. She was so nice so level-headed, so even-handed in everything she did. She never missed out to anybody, be it old, young, be it rich or poor. She was a super lady and one we will miss very much. And I'm so sorry for the family of Patterson's, as you would expect. and a new charity in her honour will be unveiled during Grand National Week. Well, that's it. We know the weights now, and we look forward to the Grand National, which, after everything we have been through over the last few months, will be bigger than ever before. We look forward to welcoming the world to Aintree in just over seven weeks' time. And to finish today, something very special. Laura Wright and the Liverpool and Naughty Ash signing choir, who had to put up with me last year, are ready to sing us out. get back home Once there was a